Hey folks, so last week we talked about natural ground blinds, natural cover. We got some feedback on that. Some folks asking about hunting seats and chairs that they would use for hunting natural cover. We got a few here today and that's what we're going to talk about. So first let's talk about the cheapest option. This is just a simple folding chair. You can get them from Academy, Walmart. I'm not even sure where this one came from. It is a great real tree camo though. You know, I'm not gonna tell anybody if they have one not to try to use it, but they're, they're noisy, they're uncomfortable, they're unstable. It's almost impossible to stay upright and still unless the ground is just perfectly level. In my opinion, if you have one of these, they're good for sitting around a campfire if you wanna roast a marshmallow or maybe fix a weenie on a stick in the fire. But other than that, get rid of them. They're not worth anything. So here we have the Waldron pack seat. This is not my, my seat. Mr. Ron Waldron here at the local archery club let me borrow this for the purpose of this video. But I know a lot of people use and like these. It's a great option and it's pretty flexible. Uh, as, as I said, it comes with the carrying straps. It's not very heavy. I'm gonna weigh it, but I'm guessing somewhere in the three pound range probably. It works in a couple of different ways. So uh, it has a seat that folds out. It's just a sling style seat. And if you're going to be using it against the tree, you can literally just lean it against the tree and then you sit into the seat itself. If you're not hunting against the tree and maybe you're in a, uh, a natural blind, then you've got another leg that folds out from the back for the strap that is adjustable, so depending on how you want to keep it level. But then you've got a seat uh, that, you can, that you can sit using you know pretty much any cover so it doesn't have to be against the tree and i've looked at these in the past and there's a couple of reasons that i haven't pulled the trigger on one but it's not necessarily because it's a bad seat it's just i already have a seat so it'll do the same thing this seat does but i'll be honest after looking at this one and, and carrying it around a little bit i am definitely considering it but i'll leave a link below to where you can look at and purchase one of these yourself they run about 250 dollars so um, if you can find someone that owns one I highly recommend you check it out before making the purchase to see if it fits your needs. Just one note, the quiver here, I'm pretty sure, I don't know if this is an option from Waldrop Pack Seats or not, or if this is something that Ron did himself. I'm guessing it's probably something that he did himself, but I'm not, I'm not sure, so I'm not going to say. But again, very comfortable, very adjustable, lightweight. Again, it does have a, it does have a price tag, but other than that, great little chairs. So something you might want to consider. Okay, folks, this is a Millennium hunting chair. I don't remember the model number, but again, I'll include a link below. But I've had this chair for several years and it's really served me very well. The closest comparison I give to this seat uh, that a lot of traditional guys may know is the Huntmore. The Huntmore is a great seat if you get a good one. I had one and I'll be honest, it made noise no matter what I did. And eventually I ended up giving it away. It would always make a creak at the worst possible time. This one has not done that for me yet. It's got a very roomy seat, really good back support. It's got adjustable legs, which do pull off of here. I can do it. The feet actually fold up and go in this bag up underneath. They are adjustable as far as height. You can adjust each leg independently. So if you're on uneven ground, you can get this thing to be very level and steady. Uh, swivel feet on the bottom. So on pretty much any surface, you can get that chair to sit up very easily and comfortably. It's quiet, doesn't creak, doesn't make any noise, good back support, swivels quietly, and it's very, very comfortable. The only seat I prefer over this is the hammock seat. And if I've got a tree that I can use the hammock seat on, I will use the hammock seat 10 out of 10 times. If I'm hunting in a, a brush blind, it doesn't offer me the use of a tree, or maybe it's in a, a down tree top or something like that, that's when I go to the, the Millennium chair. Personally, I've, Having had both and owned both the Huntmore and this chair, I think this is actually a better chair than the Huntmore was. They're no longer being made as I understand it. And this chair runs around 200 bucks. It's heavier than the Waldrop pack seat. It's definitely heavier than the hammock seat, but for comfort and really long all day sits, you cannot beat this chair. You can sit in this chair for hours without being fatigued. So if you're in a situation where you need to be really still, really quiet, can't move a lot, can't make any noise when you're moving, this is a fantastic chair and I highly recommend it. Okay, so the last option we have today uh, when talking about ground seats is probably, no, it is. It's absolutely my favorite. Uh, and to kind of show you some of the reasons why it's my favorite, I actually brought my pack out here with me. This is my normal daily hunting pack for whitetails here in, in Georgia. 
it's a tree, a Badlands tree stand. It's it's small, compact, not very heavy, and the seat that that I'm going to show you is actually in this pack right now. It's a it's called a hammock seat. It used to be by I think a company called Hammock Outdoors, but now it's Fanatic Outdoors. Not sure exactly what happened there, but this thing is very flexible, very lightweight. Maybe maybe two pounds, maybe not even that. This one is well worn. It's actually got some stitching that's coming apart. It's been, it's been hunted a lot. The one thing that you will hear and might see some people complain about this seat is the fact that it's, it can be noisy. And I'm not going to dispute that, but I will tell you there are some things that you can do to negate that. One is use the seat, get it broke in. It's much less noisy after you've used it for uh, a season than it is when you first buy it new. The other thing is to wear the right clothing when you're using the hammock seat. Uh, fleece is great, wool is great, but those natural materials will soften this up a great deal and make very little noise, which I'll show you here in just a second. Um, as far as using the seat, it's very straightforward. You've got a center post that you'll straddle that goes against the tree, and you've just got a simple strap and buckle. The strap and buckle go around the tree, um, just about waist high. Strap it in place, it does not have to be overly tight. It will settle in with you. Then the center post again goes right against the base of the tree and you're ready to sit. So that quick and easy, it's set up and ready to go. Now to sit in the seat, and I prefer sitting real low to the ground. So that's what I'm gonna show at first, is sitting real low. But you get the sides of the material, pull it out on each side, and then just settle into the seat. And you're ready to hunt that quick. So, you know, I, the, the one thing you have to do with these seats is you have to set up and be prepared for where you're going to get your shots. I typically set up to where my shot range is somewhere in here. So I can easily draw and shoot this way by twisting my legs slightly, definitely shoot sideways. I can pivot around the tree and I can even shoot behind me if I wanted to. If you're the type of person that likes to sit up a little bit higher, the pole telescopes so we can bring it out there without adjusting the top. Again, pull the sides out and sit down. And now I can all but pick my feet up off the ground here. Now that's a balancing act and it will shift. My feet are off the ground. Very, very, very stable, very comfortable option. And again, I can shoot behind me. I can shoot any way out here. I can even shift. Again, I wouldn't have leaves if I was hunting. I can shift and shoot here. One thing you can't do, you can't shoot this way. Now, one thing some people may say it looked at me is, well, uh, I would think you would want to sit up in front of the tree so that you can use the tree to block your, uh, or to use the tree as a background. And yes, it would be nice. However, where I typically set up, I've got cover in front of me. I've got a backdrop. I've got cover behind me, usually thicker than what's in front of me and I'm still blending into the tree. As long as I'm sitting up next to the tree and I'm not waving my arms around and moving a lot, I'm still blending in. And I can still make this shot, I can make this shot. I can even come around here and I can make this shot without ever leaving the tree. So would this, would it be better in front? Of course, but in most of the situations, you can get away with this and I would say of all the ground hunting I do, I probably use this seat 80 to 90% of the time with the Millennium chair being the chair that I use maybe 10% of the time. The only time I will use the Millennium over this is if I just do not have a tree that I can use. So that's the options that I have to share with you today. There's probably a few others. I know there's a couple of others out there. In fact, I had one that I was going to show that I just decided against it because I think for uh, the average traditional bow hunter anyway, it's just not, it, it, it's not a great option. I think what I've showed you today, with the exception of the little triangle folding seat, these are some of the best options that you'll find. If you can, find somebody that'll let you borrow one, test it out, make sure it works for you. This seat here is only like 59 bucks though, so you can buy one of these without breaking the bank. Whichever one you choose or whichever ones you choose, I hope they work for you as great as these do for me. And we'll see you again with another video real soon. Take care all.